do 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 Hey, welcome back everybody. Uh, today I want to share with you some of my favorite wordless picture books. Now, some of you might be thinking, why would you use a wordless picture book in a story time? But I'll tell you, you get great reactions from the kids. It's wonderful for them to build up their creativity and their storytelling skills by looking at the pictures and talking about what's going on. Um, and there's some great wordless books out there. The first one that I want to share isn't completely wordless. It is called Moo. And that is the only word throughout the entire book. I think at the end there may be something out. No, it's pretty much moo. But you, it is so fun to read. You, I can only share the first few pictures with you, but it starts off with a cow just eating some grass and just a moo. Moo. Kind of a content moo. But then he sees the farmer doing something. And he's like, moo? And this car is for sale. Look how excited that cow is. And you can go, moo! And it's just throughout the entire book. I like this one because he's speeding. So it's like, moo! Like you're speeding by. It's a fun book to read, even though it's one word. Um, I've shared it with preschoolers. I've shared it with early elementary. The kids, the older kids, like to try it themselves and put their own spin on it. So I highly recommend you checking out Moo. I didn't say um, the author, David La Rochelle. I want to put it up really close, hopefully so you can see it. There you go, Moo. Um, the next one that I want to share is about a bird. This would be great for bird story time. I shared some bird books a little bit earlier. Um, on an earlier video. This is called Nope. A Tale of First Flight. If you look at the little bird, the little bird does not want to learn how to fly. Mama bird is ready to kick that little bird right out of the nest. Well, <laughs> in a series of photos with er, beautiful illustrations, you get the perspective of the little bird and mama bird and what's gonna happen mama bird look at that face mama bird's like uh-huh you're going out there and baby bird's like nope nope and again just like with moo you can really get expressive in the way that you say nope the illustrations are fantastic the whole book the book and the the words and the illustrations are done by drew i want to say shenanan 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 and I am apologizing to you authors if I'm saying your name incorrectly. Um, I just get to see it in print, so then I have to guess. But we'll just say Drew. Drew, we're on a first name basis. I highly recommend Nope. Check it out. Um, this, again, with a bird story time or just with any, it doesn't have to be with a theme. Just share it for the fun of it. It's a great book. The next one is one of my all-time favorite picture books. It's by David Wisner. And it is Tuesday. It actually won a Caldecott, so many of you may already be familiar with this. Um, if you haven't heard of it before, check it out. It is, again, not completely wordless. There are some words in here telling you the date and the time of events. Um, like this, it starts off Tuesday evening. And then you just kind of see the frog sitting there. And um, that's not the frog, the turtle. And the turtle's like, what is going on? Because all of a sudden the frogs are flying. And it's about what happens with the frogs. And the illustrations, David Weisner is just such a phenomenal illustrator. Um, he's won the Caldecott two or three times. Um, Flotsam was another one. There's Tuesday. Oh my goodness, I'm blanking. Look it up. Look it up. I love this picture. And this guy's like, what's going on? And again, it has the time. So dates and times will be in there. The ending is hilarious because the bird or the birds, the frogs can no longer fly. Um, and at the very end, though, the next Tuesday, you get this great illustration with the shadow. Huh, what's flying this week? Um, so this is a great one for an animal story time, a great one for story time about um, light and shadow. Um, 
or just pigs and frogs or just because you want to share it. Tuesday. Check that one out. And this next one is actually for older kids, I believe. Because the illustrations are a bit more um, scary or intense, I guess. This is actually, and we actually um, keep this in our juvenile collection, children's fiction collection. And I went ahead and moved it back to the picture book section just so other people could see it. It is um, The Mysteries of Harris Burdick. And it's by um, Chris Van Alsberg. And the illustrations, let me show you some of the illustrations. Um, not too bad. Mr. Linden's library. He had warned her about the book. Now it was too late. And that's what you get. And I used this. Um, I did student teaching in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade English. And I use this book as story starters for the kids. They get to, they got to go around, take a look at the pictures. They could even use the first sentence that's given for each photo, and um, then write their stories. And this one always got me just dessert with the glowing pumpkin. Um, many years later, because this was back in like 1988, so it was a very long time ago when I did student teaching. Um, not too long ago, though, it was around, oh, 2011, I think, they came out, someone else got that brainy idea, I'm sure I am not the only student teacher or teacher who ever used the Mysteries of Harris Burdick in a, um, English class, um, so the idea was not new, but around 2011, they came up with 14 amazing authors tell the tales of the Chronicles of Harris Burdick. And these are big name authors like Kate DiCamillo, M.T. Anderson, Sherman Alexi, Chris Van Ellsberg, John Shushka, Louis Sackar, Linda Sue Park, Walter Dean Myers, Gregory McGuire, Lois Lowry, Tabitha King, Stephen King, Jules Pfeiffer, Cory Doctorow. Um, they all take, one of them each takes one of the pictures and you get, you get the illustration again. And then the other author's tale. So like Tabitha King wrote Archie Smith, Boy Wonder, to go along with that first photo. This is a really great book. Again, these are for older older kids or even adults. I really enjoyed it. Um, but it's other people taking a look at those pictures and making stories out of them. Great idea for the older kids. All right. I hope you enjoyed the recommendations today. If you have any other favorite wordless picture books that you would like to share with everyone, please put them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you can get more recommendations and some fun videos from us on a somewhat regular basis. I'm trying to get that scheduled down. All right. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Bye.